Why do scan results differ every time? This is a complex question and there are a number of reasons why it happens. First is the nature of the terrain you're scanning, your body. In 1972 and 1977, two different studies assayed the human body in order to determine the bacterial load carried by the average person. They found that the average number of bacterial cells was 10 times greater than the number of human cells, meaning that we humans are actually 90% bacterial cells and we're only 10% human. A more recent Israeli study revisited the topic and claimed to find errors in the original research. The revised figures estimate an average of 30 trillion human cells and between 39 and 50 trillion bacterial cells. So whichever study we refer to, we are still mostly bacteria. As mind-boggling as this is, the vast majority of these bacteria are harmless. Some are beneficial and are actually been essential for life. 70% of our immune system is made from such good bacteria. All of these organisms, the good, the bad and the harmless, have mortal oscillatory rates between 76,000 and 880,000 Hz. When you perform a systemic scan, you are inputting frequencies at full amplitude that cover this entire range. So this scan is also a powerful treatment, and some users experience Herxheimer reactions after the scan. Your first scan will kill many different species, but because their destruction causes a stress reaction in your body, their mortal frequencies are recorded in your scan. After you've used the results to treat as recommended, you will have removed them all, so they won't be found in your next scan. Another complicating factor is that for some reason, it's really only practical to seek the top 20 hits in your body with every scan. However, some species seem to die a noisier death than others. We call these the loudest screamers because they cause bigger stress events in your body. Because biofeedback scanning has no way to differentiate between the good and the harmless, these are the ones that Spooky Pulse or Generator X will record. The nasty stealth pathogens, on the other hand, have evolved ways to evade the immune system, so they don't call attention to themselves. As a result, their frequencies may not be initially picked up and recorded. Each time you scan, you may find another 20 of the loudest screamers that remain. And even these may not include the bad guys that are responsible for your illness. For that, you must first remove all the loudest noisemakers with repeated scans. When you've done this, there will be no loud screamers left to drown out the death throes of the nasties, and your results will now include the immortal frequencies. There are also other factors involved. Killing bacteria, for example, will invariably release the, the viruses which infect them, as well as toxins. Some bacteria that manage to survive the first scan may change to a cyst or other form that is not so easy to kill next time. And killed parasites will release bacteria, viruses, toxins and heavy metals. This means that your terrain is in a constant state of flux, never the same from moment to moment. Given all of this, it's unreasonable to expect repeatability in successive scans until you reach the layer of hardier pathogens that are doing the damage. It is not realistic to believe that one or two scans will solve all your problems although they will certainly help by removing many burdens on your immune system. Getting to the root of a disease is like peeling an onion layer by layer. This is why the method we recommend is to scan, use your results in contact mode seven to eight times, then scan again and continue in this way until you reach your goal of good health.